Hey viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer. Now when I watched the video of Alex over at the Extra Mile announcing the very first uh, online race in the Seto Corsa for all his subscribers that wanted to join in, I actually had to be part of that uh, event, even though it meant uh, missing some of my much needed beauty sleep and staying up a little bit later than my old body can handle just to be in this race. And so this video is the result of that race, but an interesting thing happened and this could be a very good video for the type of subscribers that I'm hoping to help with my channel, being uh, beginner drivers and intermediate type drivers because of the problem with working out the time zone. So Alex told me in one of the comments that it'll be from Germany uh, in the European time zone, which when I tried to work out the difference between there and Australia, it turned out to be the standard uh, 10 hours difference, uh, the same as the US. But in a second video, he specifically said Central European, so I double checked but uh, realized too late that it was actually nine hours difference. Uh, there was a general mix up with a lot of subscribers probably thinking that anyway, but what happened was I came into the race virtually as uh, a lot of the practice was over and barely got any qualifying. Now this was on the Highlands track, which I know, but I only have ever driven the original Highlands and Alex chose Highlands Long, which I'd never actually driven, and was uh, trying to learn the first half of the course, because essentially the second half of the course is what I, I know, but the first half has a lot of sharper corners. So I was doing terrible and realized that we, where this might help beginners, uh, especially is because I wasn't, even listening to my own rule you know it's one thing to have a set of rules for your own uh, racing knowledge but it's another thing to apply them and what i was doing was i was so excited to be part of this that i was over racing so i was i was driving too fast trying to chase cars coming into the these a uh, couple of not quite hairpin but very sharp corners coming in too hot um, crashing out so often in the first race but uh, what happened was in the fourth and fifth lap of this five lap race, I started to unlock, okay, this is how you take the corners. And what happened was that's when most people, I assume because they also thought it was the 10 hour difference or whatever the difference was in their, the country of where they were joining from, uh, they, uh, so this, in other words, uh, the 10 hour difference would have been one o'clock in the morning and I joined at 12 o'clock when, but I missed most of the practice and the qualifying. But Alex was having such a good time that he continued to race again because I think he realized too, I think there were only seven people in the first hour and at one o'clock, that's when everyone else joined, probably thinking the same problem with the time zone. And so we had then a proper race. But by that time, I'd understood that I'm not applying my own uh, racing knowledge. So let me explain that what happened now. And so in the second race, I was so excited and really wanted to do a good job that I, although I was recording it, I didn't want to do any audio. I didn't, I, I've watched channels like um, Gamer Muscle, all the channels that stream, Gamer Muscle, Sim Pit, and Sim Racing Paddock. And you can tell that when they're reading the chat and talking, it does take away from the concentration of doing an out and out best lap. So when I did this, the, the second proper race, I didn't want to do any um, audio. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do like a separate audio over the replay and just talk you through it. But essentially what I learned was, was not to um, race the car. In, in other words, the car in front, if I see it, the mistake you can do is trying to chase it. And what that does is it takes your focus off 
where your breaking points are and that's what I was doing in the first race. I was so determined to try and do well that I over raced and was constantly crashing into the barriers partly because I didn't know the first half of the track but also because I was over driving. So with the second chance and with everyone joining um, at the later time I thought I've got to uh, do my own mantra and learn from my mistake and drive within myself but smoothly and so what this uh, five lap race will show is how I've slowed it down again slow in fast out and did very steady driving based on the fact that instead of seeing the car in front and trying to race the car I would only race a car if it was in the zone where we were so close that we could race and the rest of the time concentrating on where my braking points are, coming into the corner at the correct speed to get maximum speed out of the corner, and I had a much, much, much better race. But again, it was my own fault because I wasn't applying my own uh, mantra about how I should approach a race. And so what I want to do is, I'll do some commentary, but it'll be over the replay to run you through the mistakes that I made in the first race and how I improved so much in this proper second race. And so this is Michael signing out for Single Racer and let's go racing, going the extra mile. Okay folks, so here we are about to start the race. Here I am qualified in seventh spot and boy were my nerves on edge. To not stuff up this uh, start was so intense, uh, it's quite incredible. So I checked my fuses, yes everything's ready to go. Just waiting for the uh, red lights to go out. The nerves were absolutely tingling at this point. Very, very excited. Just don't stuff this up, Mick. So here we go. And you just want to give racing room here. So this is the first part of the track that I'd never raced before. And luckily we had the previous race, but I almost stuffed it up. But I wanted to give all the other drivers racing room. I figured at this point, if anyone is catching me, I didn't want to muck anyone else's up, uh, race up, so this was the first corner that I had a lot of trouble with gauging how much speed I needed to come into the corner. So I was constantly watching, especially um, the in the mirror, watching where the cars were beside me like this and giving them room uh, just because I was less familiar with the track and just wanted, didn't want to stuff their race up. So here we are side by side. Extremely intense, but just holding my position and just trying to hang on. So I've dropped back a couple of spots, but this is part of the key about what I was saying, what I mucked up before. I was too busy racing and trying to go too fast. So now it was all, all about realizing my mistakes, saying, what are you doing, Mick? You know, you, you have these rules in place, apply the rules. So that was just let the cars go, focus on the line into the corner. So there's one car gone, I've already gained a spot. Just focus on the braking points and ignore the cars in front. Don't race them, don't try and catch them because what you do is you're so focused on the back of that car that you miss your braking point and so just try uh, you know this is the long straight now but as I come up to the second half now where uh, this must connect up to the normal highlands and uh, from here on I know where I'm going but it was all about just making sure watch the mirrors and realize where my own braking point was not how I was doing to the car in front and brake correctly and come in nicely for the corner. There's another car gone. Again, beautiful. So this was the lesson that I had to learn from the first race, overdriving. So now all the other cars are overdriving, trying to go too hot, and all I'm focused in is do a good lap, Mick, do a good lap. 
hit your braking point, come in nice and tight. If you are fast enough, you'll catch them anyway, and just focus in on better driving. So I'm guessing at this point I've got my seventh spot back. Um, it says six, I think, down the bottom. So I'm not sure, but I always thought that that was, you had to cross the start finish line to get the accurate uh, figure. I didn't think that was uh, uh, g uh, going as you drove, so I'm not sure about that. So five lap race. Now we're starting to feel comfortable. I just didn't need to muck. This was the hardest corner I was worried about. I, in, whenever I raced this track, that was the corner I tended to muck the, the most up just because it was so sharp and you had to kill so much speed. And now we're starting to feel more comfortable. Now we're starting to feel like I could stretch my legs and try and race a little bit. But again, the, for beginners, the focus is, so what, what I say about my mantra is the car is not close enough to technically race. And so the mistake you can make is you lock your eyes onto the car and you miss your braking points. So you don't look at the car, you look at where you want to brake. And then what happens is if I'm lucky enough to catch the car, when it comes into the zone where I can actually hit it, that's when I start to race the car or position myself to race the car rather than focusing on the car and missing completely your braking point that's when you hit the barriers all the time so it was a great lesson that I needed to learn again myself in that first race so if the car pulled away that's fine he's faster than me but just concentrate on my own braking points and let's see how it goes so this was a key one because I didn't know I could take this flat out and so that was one of the things in the first race that helped me understand that I could go through that whole uh, set of corners uh, flat out. And this one is probably the one that gave me a lot of trouble. There's two that almost have like a double apex and I was having a lot of trouble figuring out the exact angle to come in. Luckily, <laughs> this is where it's smart is I watch, watched Alex's video and I watch how Alex takes the lines and that's how uh, you can improve as well is, you know, just watching the better drivers like Alex, how they take the lines and try and learn from them. Unfortunately, <laughs> I did that after this race. What's interesting now is we're settling into all the drivers seem to be now finding their position. So I'm not gaining and this is the one aspect that I say over and over for beginner drivers is have your track map on. See at the top, I'm constantly looking at the top and not so much about the car in front but I can see how far the car is behind me and that helps me tremendously to take the pressure off. It's like one less thing I have to worry about. So if I see the car very closely behind me, that's when I start um, watching the, uh, the positioning of to make sure I, uh, we don't try and collide to give him room to race. So I can see by the track map that uh, he's not anywhere near me, so that's, it just takes that one extra bit of pressure off and I can just focus on racing clean and racing what's ahead of me. Now, can I overtake him? Now, what I'm trying to do here is to put pressure on him. I don't want to hit him. I don't want to make a risky move. All I want to do is put pressure on the guy and see if he under the pressure right and there he goes and that's the exact reason that you don't take risks 
which uh, unfortunately I was doing in the first race, and this is what I mean is um, that I wasn't applying my own rules and suffering because of it. So it was a great lesson for me to re-establish those things to say, Mick, you do those things for a reason, learn from your mistakes and try and improve. And I had this much better race. Now, I'll speed this up just for the sake of there's not much happening in this lap. So let's speed it up a little. Okay, so here we go for the last two laps of the race, and this is where I agonise uh, trying to decide over what you generally might call race craft, because I've settled in, I've got a long way to the car in front, so it's unlikely that I'm going to catch him unless he makes a mistake, and I've, I've, even the, the car behind me is close, I'm at a nice rhythm. So my idea or my thinking is here, as long as I can be smooth, I'm trying, because the fuel is coming down, I'm trying to uh, break each lap a record, like be faster each lap, but as long as I'm smooth. So the same braking points, the, the same uh, speed into the corners, but because of a lighter car, uh, providing your tyres don't go, you should be trying to then just improve little by little on, uh, on your lap time. So I want to see now, I think this is where I do my best lap time for the race. So we'll see how we go. Now all I want to do is be smooth here. So I'm constantly looking for the spots where to brake, not to carry too much speed, but still that's a terrible quantity. In these bigger, heavier cars, it's quite often hard to know when the tyres are going. People like Alex, I'm sure, can feel it a bit more, but you know, I have an older, older wheel, so it's kind of a bit more vague, harder to tell when it's uh, <laughs> the tyres going or just your bad driving. The other thing I didn't get much of a chance to do is set up the car. I mean, I didn't know how to set up a car anyway, but even just to improve the gears a little bit, this is I'm basically driving uh, 
it's a tuned car, but you know, just uh, for the Norwich driver actually. So it's probably got all the wrong settings for this track. I just grabbed my Norwich driver settings and hoped that it would work on this track. So this is a beautiful corner to get right. I love coming out of this bit. The, these last few corners, this jump over here. Very, very exciting race. So now I've, I've secured fifth spot and what I'm trying to do here is hopefully do my best lap time. And if that means then I catch the car in front, that's great, but if not, that's the best I can do then. All you can hope to do is to better your time each time and then you know you're driving at your best given that uh, you know, without learning ways to improve, but you know you're at least improving lap by lap. I always get so nervous about this corner because it's so easy to carry too much speed in. Nice exit out of that. Yes, new best, okay. So it's 338, I think that's my best lap in this car given I've only ever had the two races on this track, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely happy with that. Now we come into the issue that it plagues me about. Uh, I've been racing for 20 years in sim racing games, but never on YouTube, just, in my, just for personal enjoyment. And so many times, I'm sure all of you have done it, where you've raced in a you know what some sort of championship race and like I've stuffed up the last the very last lap of even on the Nordschleifer now those of you that love the Nordschleifer know on uh, this is the tourist version where you come onto the straight and the you drive into the um, the parking lot there how many of us have stuffed up the last corner on the tourist version of Nordschleifer you just you've got a hot lap going to break your record and you stuff up that last corner. I've done it at least a dozen times. So my thinking here is back off slightly. The tyres could be going. I'm driving well. I've got fifth spot nailed. Just be a little smoother. Uh, as in, you know, still 98, 99%. Don't get out of rhythm, but don't push it to the nth degree. And then something happens uh, a bit later on, which is, you know, always that thing about uh, the, the to and fro between giving it your absolute all or throwing the whole lot away. So at the moment, I've got fifth spot nailed, but I remember a race that is that helped create, uh, here in Australia, the V8 Supercars, Peter Brock, the legend. Peter Brock to me is the best driver in Australia, if uh, not one of the best drivers in the world, if uh, you know he were to ever do anything like that, but he was smooth and consistent, but there was one particular race at Bathurst where he broke the lap record on the very last lap, and it was just an outstanding drive full stop, but so people were so amazed that he would even have the, the balls, literally the balls, to break a lap record on the very last lap. And this is the thing, he is, he is an alien. Whereas I'm not an alien and I'm thinking, well, I don't want to throw this away. But what happens now is a situation where that could have possibly cost me, possibly, but it's that decision between driving with your balls in your mouth literally or just being conservative and hanging on to that spot. So as we come in for the last lap, this guy loses it and he just manages to get it together. Now this could be a back mark, I don't really know unfortunately in um, VR you can't have the names on so it could be a back marker but I had the chance to pass him. Had I gone a little harder, 
I might have got him and I just couldn't get him on the start finish line and I might have got split fourth spot. But here's me finishing the race. Now I bumped into him just because we're all uh, stopping anyway and just I wasn't concentrating but here we are and I've managed to hang on the fifth space. Uh, fifth spot and this is the argument about I'm so excited I got fifth spot beautiful let's just double check that yes here we go fifth spot beautiful or do I throw the whole race away by going too hard and uh, you know just ruining the whole race so that was such an exciting race I'll sign off now. Until next time, uh, this will be an ongoing thing, hopefully, uh, Alex at the, over at the Extra Mile says. So I'm really excited to see what the next race will be. And uh, as far as I know, it's uh, more like a cruise, like a drifting kind of thing, which I'll be just as excited to be in. So this is Michael signing out. I'll catch you next time. See you later.